Welcome back, everybody, to the Real Collective Podcast. As always, if you are liking this podcast, hit that like button, click subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date with all different types of real estate content, videos for houses before they come out, and share this with someone who you think might be interested in the kind of stuff that we're talking about today. I am joined by not Brendan McKeegan, but a very special guest, friend of the show, friend of mine, Leo Alvarenga from Good Story. You might have noticed these mugs. Leo is another real estate agent and he runs an amazing team here out of the same office. I have the benefit of uh, being great friends with Leo, playing soccer with him on a regular basis pre-pandemic and uh, happy to sit down and and, and cut it up with you a little bit, talking about people who want to sell their houses by themselves. Leo, welcome. Thank you for doing this. And uh, why don't you take a second, introduce yourself to people and tell them what's up. Thank you, uh, thank you, Sean, for, for having me here. It's a <clears throat> it's a pleasure to to be on your show and and obviously to share an office with you. Um, yeah, so uh, my name is Leo Alvarenga. Uh, we run the Good Story team, uh, with my wife and a few awesome uh, awesome people, um, and we're here to chat a little bit about um, why you should or you shouldn't uh, sell a, a home uh, by yourself. Now, before you got into real estate, uh, did you ever consider selling a house by yourself or transacting in real estate without hiring a professional? Yes, I think uh, I think I think it came through mind a few times. Um, my my wife, coincidentally, Jen, uh, has been a realtor for a little bit longer, and she actually uh, helped me avoid that mistake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, before I got into real estate. Uh, I thought that, hey, you know what, I can I can do this on my own. And even after I was in real estate, when I was considering selling a house in a different uh, province, I was like, oh, well, you know what, I can do this myself. Uh, and, you know, obviously, I find that people who are more intelligent uh, tend to think, oh, well, geez, you know, all these guys do is put a sign in the front lawn put it on MLS and then someone else comes along and buys it. This is easy peasy. Hey, I can do it myself. Um, have you spoken with clients uh, recently who have either tried to sell their house themselves or, um, you know, were considering it? Yes. I think it's, it's a conversation that happens all the time. Right. And, um, and fu- funny enough, I mean, I can speak for experience. I have two examples I can speak about. Yeah. Um, one of them, like I said, is one of the ones from, uh, from back in the day, back in 2013, <clears throat> I was not a real estate agent then Jen luckily was. And, um, if it would have been myself, um, looking for a house on my own and going directly with a listing agent or, or a seller, I was going to buy a property that was off, uh, near Finley Creek. It was right on bank street, very busy street. I loved it. I loved it because it was a big lot. It was a good price. Um, and and Jen's like, no, I, don't, I just don't see you. A, there, it's going to be harder to rent. I wanted to rent the rooms, you know, to students. I was a student back then. Um, and I wanted to rent the rooms to students and 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 and, and pay my mortgage that way. She's like, you're going to have a harder time renting to students. And I don't think you're going to see the appreciation here. Um, so we kind of shifted our search a little bit. Fast forward, we and we ended up uh, purchasing a house that was closer to Carlton and Algonquin. Fast forward to 2023 the house I would have purchased would have gone up. The one on bank street would have gone up in value, say 75% big gain, right? 75, maybe would have doubled in value. Yeah, that's great. The home that I purchased has gone up in value about 250%. Just, and and the price difference wasn't huge, uh, but it's just a a matter of location, uh, the type of home, the type of street, et cetera. So I think that's a huge example. I mean, I would have felt good too, right? Hey, my home went up uh, 75, 100%. But what was I missing on the other side, right? And that, and that all came from listening to the professional realtor. Listening to a professional realtor. But I think the ultimate example is now. Like we are in the midst of selling our own property. Yeah. I'm not the listing agent. Right. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a professional. I'm a professional salesperson. Yeah. I'm not the listing agent. Right. There is someone within our team that's fully dealing with it, that has no emotion attached to it, yeah. and that is helping us with the sale of our own home, even though we are realtors. Yeah. Right. That's so huge. we kind of like put our money where our mouth is, right? Like we're literally having someone, even though we're realtors, we're having someone else handle it, another professional. And that's one of the biggest things where because we're emotionally attached. Right? Yeah. And, and, and purpose. 
that that makes that makes a lot of sense because it's the same a lot of times when you find people that are talking about like when we go we talk to the general public a lot of the times they say hey look i want to do this on my own i want to sell this house on my own i know what i'm doing i'm a smart person i can figure out the math i can run the numbers on it yeah. and figure out what someone would want to pay and then they always price it higher <laughs> you notice yeah. that uh you know, and 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 it sits and it sits and it sits you know unfortunately and it, it's 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 removing yourself from from the emotional ties to the financial gains that come along with with that property and you it's it's hard to do even if you are a professional real estate agent because it's your house because it's your money right uh and and you don't want to you know oh take a get a low ball offer and be insulted and then blow the whole thing up. And that's the only people that you've got. Who, who exactly. Are exactly. So, yeah. I, you know, I've, I've, I've met with a lot of people over the years who have, you know, when you go in and you, you, you walk into someone's house and you say, as, as a, as a listing agent, you walk into someone's house and say, Hey, you know what are you interviewing other agents? Are you considering selling your house on your own? And I've heard other people say when they're, when they're selling their, when they're considering selling their house on their own, the main reason that people are trying to sell their house on their own is not because they devalue us as agents, but it's all about trying to save that, you know, that rate, that, that four or five, six percent, whatever it is that the agent's charging. Of course, the rates are, you, it's negotiable, right? Um, you can't ever say that there's a, a fixed rate or anything like that, but that's what the sellers are hoping to, to save. They're hoping to save that, that rate. And I think a lot of times they get stuck where they aren't really paying attention to, well, I'm going to have to pay the rate on the other side. I'm going to have to pay, you know, two or two and a half or 3% right. on the other side. Right. So the question becomes, what are you saving really? That's, that's it. That's it. Right. So I think it's, especially especially someone that's looking to save right like especially with the times right now you know inflation is crazy high rates are very high everyone's you know everyone's tight these days and yeah. and it's a valid question it's a valid concern you know why am i paying 20 30 40 thousand dollars um you know some companies advertise you know we'll charge you 0.5 percent one percent but the reality is uh, you know and without you know bashing anyone here it's just that that kind of advertising is 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 not uh, in my opinion ethical because you're leaving out that portion where you know uh, buyer's agent you typically end up paying a buyer's agent in most transactions sometimes you might find someone you know you might find a buyer that just comes off the street you put a sign you sell it to them hey you you know you save the entire commission that's very very rare yeah. 90 99% of the time I, I don't know what the stat is exactly you will have to pay a buyer's agent and and that's you know there's no standard fee but it hovers anywhere between two percent two and a half percent right yeah. um and that i find gets you know gets lost in the in the advertising right oh we'll charge you one percent but then when you go to sign the papers they're like oh we'll charge you one percent but you still got to pay the buyer's agent two and a half so you're still you're still at three and a half percent four percent right so uh, it's something to consider you know for anyone out there that's looking you know to save and the reality is it's not it's not the commission, right? And that's what we tell anyone that's looking to, you know, to to sell on their own or buy on their own. It's not the commission. It's the service that you get, right? It's it's what you end up with at the end of the day. Yeah. Right? yeah. If you're selling and, you know, the, yeah, sure, the, commi the commission is 5%. It's a million dollar home. The commission is 5%. You're looking at $50,000. Right. But that agent, a competent agent, again, right? There's different types of agents. <laughs> yes. A competent agent you know, uh, a competent agent will hold on to your value as much as possible. So, you know, you might end up netting, you know, he might sell it for a million and you end up netting 950. Or you might go and save the commission, list it at the same price, but end up selling it at 920. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, what's better for you? Well, so that's kind yeah. of the conversation that we have, right? It's and it's and it's and it's hard to justify that because what you're talking about when you're talking with a client, you're talking about, hey, here's the rate that you're going to pay me. And I believe that here's what we're going to sell for. And there's this unknown factor of how much you're going to sell it for. But there's this absolute known factor of here's how much I charge. 
right? right. So a lot of the times we get stuck talking about this absolute known factor, which is how much I'm going to charge, but we don't talk about how much you're going net. Like I, I looked at my numbers from last year and I sell houses. If you compare uh, to the average agent yeah. or the average list price to sell price ratio, last year was 104%. Amazing. Ours was 111. So it's we're we're seven percent better than average right now. The average sell price to to list price ratio is ninety nine percent. Okay, so obviously it's different every year. Last year was a little bit crazy, but I know I've got a track record that says, "Hey, look, based on the thirty five listings that we that I sold last year, I'm going to do seven percent better than the, the average agent realtor. that's out there." But how? Yeah. You can't promise that, right? You, 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 I, I can't say I'm going to sell yeah. your house for 7% more than what it's listed for because because you don't know, right? There's there's too many different factors that go into it. But ultimately, I mean, it, it sounds super cliche to say it, but you get what you pay for, right? If you're, if you're doing That's everything you can to grind down an extra, you know, one or 2% from what the, what the listing agent is, on a million dollar home, you're talking about twenty thousand dollars, and you're like, "Yeah, that's twenty thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. I don't have twenty thousand dollars in my pocket." Yeah. You know? Most people don't. Yeah. But if you've got a good agent, then you're going to be getting prestigious service. You guys offer some of the best service that 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 we that we see going on, right? Like we at at the Real Collective, we we really try to offer the level of service that you guys offer a good story. It is above and beyond and super super well respect what you guys are doing. Um, and we try to offer optimal results. How do we maximize the amount of money that you're putting back in your pocket when you're selling? Or how do we make sure that when we're buying a house, you're buying it for the lowest possible price that you can? How can we get that extra, you know, and really when it comes down to it, it's that it's that final conversation to push you over the edge to get you that extra ten or twenty thousand dollars when you're selling yeah. that most people don't do. Most agents don't do. I'm sorry to say this isn't a bash on anybody, right? Everybody's free to run their business however they want. But the fact that, that we care, and I think you guys are very similar, the fact that we care and we push yeah. that extra little bit is 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 what earns our clients back their money and then some versus if they were trying to do it on their own or like you said trying to hire an agent who's yeah you know exactly and that, and that said like for us it's uh it's just different like you said everyone's free to run their business like they like and it's just a different model right like um i find that the real collective or us a good story like we don't it's not a volume-based business you know and the reality is it, it, it's a different model that's fine but if someone if an agent is willing to forego their commission at the negotiating table with you, Mr. Seller. What do you think is going to stop that agent from leaving money at the table with the buyer when they're negotiating your home? Right. So I think that's kind of where, where it comes in from. And, and for whoever's watching, that's thinking of selling interview as many agents as you can, you know, interview one, two, three, four agents ask for that track record that Sean was talking about. What was your what was your results last year? How many sales did you have? And what was you know what was the average sale to list price? Right, like all these things. It's important to ask. Um, uh, that, that's 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 the that's the one question I wish people would ask more than what the rate is that they charge. What's what's your what's your personal ratio? Right, like how what's your what's your list price? What's your sell price? And how does that compare to the average? And yeah. and you know if if clients would just ask that question, uh, you know I think a lot. <laughs> A lot of subpar agents might be out of business, right? That's it. That's it. And, and the reality is, uh, one of the reasons why, um, why you know, looking, you know, scrutinizing commissions is such a thing is because of that. Uh, yeah. Because um, you know, as an industry, all of us, we we need to step it up, and we need to provide that service for the general public to be like, oh wow, you know, like agents, yeah, they they deserve that money because they worked their ass off, right? Um, so I think all of us as agents need to step it up and, and, you know, make sure that the industry is, uh, well regarded. I think that's, yeah. that's really our dream. I, I, I want, I want to get deeper into, uh, some crazy stories that you've heard about people who have tried to sell their house, uh, uh, privately versus what happened sort of uh, after the fact. So we'll get into that in the second half. Uh, as always, everybody, if you are liking what you are hearing, hit that like button, share this with somebody who you think might be interested, who's maybe considering selling their house on their own, 
and subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date with all these podcasts. You can also go over and subscribe to uh, the Good Story uh, channel as well, right? Uh, on, on YouTube and on uh, Instagram and on Facebook. Follow Leo, follow Good Story. We'll, we'll, we'll get into how everybody can follow you at the end. And uh, we'll be back after the quick word from our sponsors. This episode of the Real Collective podcast is brought to you by Real Collective. Real Collective brings together best-in-class real estate agents and collective experts in the field to deliver the best possible service to our clients. We govern ourselves with honesty, open-mindedness, and compassion. With diverse skill sets, our agents are able to better serve a wide array of clients, including first-time buyers, first-time sellers, transferees, estate sales, investors, and rural, vacation, and luxury properties. Authenticity and transparency are pillars of our process, which allows us to put our clients at the center of everything we do. Our years of experience and knowledge allow us to deliver prestigious service and optimal results. If you are interested in buying or selling your home, contact us today at realcollective.ca. Welcome back, everybody, to the Real Collective Podcast. I hope that you enjoy that beautiful word from our sponsor. As always, if you'd like to schedule an appointment with us directly, you can do it in the uh, Calendly link below. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share this with anybody who you think might be interested. And we're going to get right into talking about some good stories. See what I did there? About uh, what we've what we've had with Fizbo. So I'll start it off. I was talking with another agent on our team, Greg. He was telling me this morning that he met with a uh, a seller, and the seller was saying, "Oh, hey, I might be, you know, I'm I'm interviewing a couple people, but I might end up selling my house myself." And he's like, "I want seven hundred thousand dollars for it." And we're like, "Man, it's five fifty, <laughs> right? Like it's it's significantly different. The highest that we'd take your listing would be at like five ninety nine. Right. And he's like, oh, no, you know what? At that point, I'm just going to do it myself. I'll do my own open houses. I'll do an open house and it will have so much shrimp. We'll have shrimp rings. We'll have shrimp cocktails. We'll do all this stuff I'm like shrimp at an open house, like seafood. What do you think? He's like, yeah. And you know what else? I'm going to cook steak on the barbecue. It's like, what are you thinking? This is what people think, like too many episodes of Selling Sunset. Anyways, Greg's like, look, man, if you want to do that, feel free. When you want to sell your house, call me. In the meantime, if you want to have invite random strangers to your open house at your overpriced house and serve shrimp cocktails go right ahead <laughs> so you know like people have no clue right like again they see a lot of what we do on tv shows and it's not real right what's what's real is the hard work the pushing the grinding the after hours stuff the qualifying that we're doing the conversations the negotiations all of the setup that leads to having the success and putting our clients in a good spot. That's all. That's, that's, that's what it's about. Um, you've got, you've got a couple good stories about, uh, about some people who wanted to sell their house privately or did sell their house privately. And you can tell that it didn't work. So hit it up. Yeah. So, I mean, the first one that comes to mind because it's so impactful, I would say is um, it was my, my aunt's neighbors in Alta Vista uh you know it was um it was it was pretty much a you know the grandmother had passed she had been in the house forever um yeah. and it was a fairly 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 unique property and um and i remember at the time you know we had we had told my aunt like hey maybe you should introduce us to them they're like yeah no they they, they don't want to use an agent they want to do privately you know we didn't push sure no problem um and the reality is uh they tried to sell it they, they sold it privately and they sold it to uh, the buyer was a developer, mm. and um, and the reality is they sold it. Just I'm just throwing numbers. So I don't know exactly, sure. yeah. Yeah. but yeah. say for example, it was uh, they sold it for like four hundred. Um, the property was a double lot. Ooh. That lot should have, in an open market, it would have been worth at least seven hundred thousand dollars. So. They got a quick sale out of it, sure, but they left, I would say, at least between two and three hundred thousand dollars on the table. And and do you think the developer came up to them and showed them some other houses that looked like theirs that were on single lots and hey, look, this one's four hundred, yeah. this one sold for four hundred. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you don't have anyone protecting your best interest. So when you're trying to sell your house on your own, it's like 
you're you're putting a sign out front saying like hey sharks come on over like here's here's your chance to, to steal oh man and 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 you're doing it a lot of the times because you're like i don't want to pay five percent well it's not five percent really or six or four or whatever the number is it's half of that right you're 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 paying the money to make sure that you're protected and yeah, and that's correct, if you've got yeah. someone who cares you're gonna get protected that's it that's it and that and that's that's i think again going back to like those interviews right like when you're interviewing an agent uh, ask the right questions you know ask mm. the right questions and make sure that that person actually cares you know and there's questions you can ask or demeanor that you can notice where you'll know if that person is out for a quick buck or they actually care you know or they're in it for the long term so so yeah that's 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 a that's a crazy story right like they sure they saved five percent but they left 80 <laughs> percent yeah know, and it's yeah, yeah. 80 on the table so Trip, trip, tripping tripping over tripping over uh, a dollar to save a nickel yeah you know yeah so i've i've got one i've got one where i took over a listing uh for they were they they were using a a sell it yourself company they hired a company uh and uh, <clears throat> we had mutual friends or something anyways I, we, we we got in touch and i walked in i said look i think you're you're drastically overpriced right um they hadn't received an offer. This was back in 2016. They had a single family house uh, in a good neighborhood, Copeland Park sort of neighborhood. And uh, they were, they were, or no, sorry, um, not Copeland Park. Anyway, it doesn't matter. They were priced at, uh, at I think, four, 450 or 460. Um, yeah, it's a great neighborhood. Copeland Park is awesome. Uh, that's, that's, anyways, sidetracked. They're priced at like 450 or 460. And I went in, I said, look, I really think your price should be something like 399. Right. And and it's and it's gonna sell for something like 375, right? Uh, and the problem is you only have one chance to make a first impression. So as you're playing this come down game, you start to look more and more and more desperate. That's right. Like, I think That's these it. guys that already, if I if I'm not mistaken, I think they'd already bought a house without me and they reached out directly to the listing agent to buy that house right so it's like they were doing everything on their own i showed up at the last minute when they were desperate they said oh my goodness we need to sell our house we already bought another house we we have to sell it we need to get as much as we can out of it i'm like well what you want what you want to sell your house isn't what's important right what it's worth is what it's worth and so i think i probably took the listing at like four and a quarter and then I you know 415 and then finally got to my 399 but at that point it was like summer so it's slower a little bit right when they first put it on in the spring they put it on for I think I think it was like 450 or 460 if they would have put it on for 399 in the spring they maybe would have got 399 maybe 410 in a bidding war ultimately we sold it for 375 right 375 376 380 something like that and um I, these are prices that you don't see obviously anymore this is going back uh, a couple of years, but you know, there's, there's that, there's that idea of, Hey, you, you've only got one chance to make a good first impression. And a lot of times as an agent coming in either as the second agent or taking over uh, somebody who's been trying to do it themselves, it's a little bit harder uh, to reposition and you sort of get, you almost get a second chance at a first impression, but you have to be very drastic from what you thought your house was worth exactly. to, to, to what you're doing now. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not always the best scenario, but ultimately if you have to sell, you have to sell and you have to sell for what the market will bear. And, and we can't like, as agents, we can't make your house worth more, right? All we can do is it's worth a range of value and we can help you sell it closer towards the top of that range. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Market value is market value. Right. So, um, and, and going on to what you just said right now, it's, it's very important. And a lot of, I, I find that a lot of the times what you said, right. Like you only have one chance to make a first impression. And what I find is, um, a lot of, um, sellers, they might try the for sale by owner route. You know, I'm going to try it on my own for now at a very high price. And then I'll look at agents afterwards. And yeah. the reality is, uh, it, it, it hurts. It yeah. hurts your bottom line because again, the first impression, right? The first impression is photos weren't great. The staging wasn't great and it was overpriced, right? You are in the market for 30, 60 days and then you go with an agent, sure at a lower price, but then you've been in the market for 60 days, right? Cumulatively. So I think that that's very important. That's that's one of the biggest things. And and again, right? Uh, it's it's not for everyone. Like some, some people might be able to, to sell it on their own. Um, you know, so, you know, it's I'm not talking, you know, we're not the end all be all, but at the end of the day, if, if you have a professional, someone that does this every day, 
it's going to allow you to continue doing what you do best, right? If you're okay. extremely competent, most likely you have a very good job, et cetera. Continue doing your job, make your money there, let the pro handle it, right? And and and, that, and that's the thing is there's so many stories that I've heard of people who are selling their house privately and they're like, hey, this is, I, I sold my house privately. I had it listed for this. I sold it for this. It was, it was great. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Um, and it's perception. Right? And, you know, then the question says, and we saw this recently, I saw this in Barhaven, uh, I don't know, two or three years ago where someone sold their, they said, hey, look, I sold it. I sold it personally. That was great. I did it on my own. I saved that two and a half percent or 2% or 3% or whatever the commission would have been to the listing agent. Right. And then we see the exact same house right next to it sells with a, with a proficient agent, someone who's good at what they do and it sells for, you know, five, six, 7% more. Yeah, that's painful. Yeah. Right. So it's like, hey, look at that. I, 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 sold, I sold this $500,000 house and I only paid the buyer agent the commission. And I sold, you know, I sold it for, I don't know, 430. And then you see like a little while later, the same house, which is actually maybe a little bit worse, sells with a proficient agent for, for, for 480. And you're like, okay, so you saved $10,000 on and the commission. The table, yeah. That's great. And you, and you missed out on 40. And it's like, we see that right all the time. Yeah. And, and, and the problem is they had listed their house for 425 when they sold it for 430. So in their minds are like, this is great. I sold my house for $5,000 more than I had it listed for. And I didn't have to, I didn't have to hire an agent. Uh, right. And, yeah. And that's it. And it's this perception and, and everybody who you talk to, who's thinking about selling their house themselves, they've had a story that's like this, where the perception is, Hey, you don't need an agent, right? You can, you can do well doing it yourself and you can, but again, it comes down to it's a risk, right? Is are you are you are you potentially leaving some some money on the table? Um, I, think, I think the best way to put it is, and because because again, right, going on, you know, there's not all agents are good. You yeah. don't need an agent. You need a good agent. Yeah, a great. Agent. That's, you, know, yeah. you need a great agent, right? Like you you don't need an agent. You need yeah. a great, right? And that's and that's and that's I think the language and the message that we have to get out there. You know, you don't need an agent. Sure, you need a great agent. Yeah. yeah. I, you know what? I agree. Cause there's, there's a lot of agents that you're like, Oh, well, you know, they're, they're not doing the best job for their client. You see it, you see it all the time. So you see it all the time, right? Like you, another thing to ask to part-time, you know, part-time agents too, right. Um, yeah. It's not, it's not a good thing. Some, some are great. They have the best intentions, but if you're not in it full time, it's hard. Yeah. You know, you might miss that call, you know, that person that really wants to see you, you might miss, you know, you might delay a certain offer, you know, and, it might well, cost you your seller a deal. It's relationships that we that the agents have with each other, right? A lot of that is is valuable, especially in the in the in the you guys work in in a higher end space a price point than we do, and a lot of it is relationship based. You know, uh, who who you know, and and uh, you'll know. Okay, look, you've got two offers that are the same. One's coming from a reputable uh, agent who we know is going to be working with great buyers, and one's coming from someone who we've never heard of before. It's happened. It's of happened course. before. Yeah. It happened before. I actually, funny enough, uh, we got a deal done like that uh, in Westboro uh, a month ago. Yeah. A month ago. We had dealt with that same agent, you know, uh, twice over the last year. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you know, two offers. It was three offers. And she's like, hey, you know, you know I, I literally told my seller, like, we should go with this one, even though it's not the best. You know, there was a marginal difference. But I know that their buyers are solid. Well, that's it. Is I mean, we're 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 here to 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 bring deals together, right? Not to get halfway there and then fall and then it fall apart at the you know at the twenty yard line or whatever the the, the saying is. What's your What's your other experience? I know you said you had um, two physical experiences you want to tell me about. So so tell me about your 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 last one. We'll 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 wrap it up. Well, so the, the last one was uh, it was a little bit uh, it was a little bit different. It was actually a listing that we actually did end up taking. Right. Yeah. So, um, so the listing had been on the market, um, you know, it, it got listed at a really poor time, right. A bad timing. Okay. Um, and it sat on the market for a few months. Um, and this particular listing, um, it was listed say for $500,000 and they couldn't sell it. You right. know, the pictures, the pictures were very poor, you know, it was just not well marketed. Yeah. Uh, we took it over and, 
the market had actually rebounded, mm. right? So it was actually not five hundred thousand. It was actually in the seven. It was actually in the six hundred k range. So, um, we actually came in and said, "Hey, we should. We can actually get you more." Yeah. Oh, that's what good. You listed at right. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's switch up the strategy. Let's do some staging here. Let's take proper photos. We came in in their heads. Couldn't get more than six fifty. I think it was. Um. We actually went up just under 700 and ended up getting multiple offers. Sold it a little bit over 700, right? So the market yeah. changed when they listed it initially, bad market. They accumulated based on market, yeah. canceled, relisted at a good market. Brand new, it showed up as a brand new listing, right? It, was, it looked beautiful. Yeah. Multiple offers. Yeah. And, and, and all of, all of that is, the setup to make something beautiful that comes as a result of ex years and years experience. Yeah. So as, as much as a, a, a private seller can say, yeah, I can take pictures of my house. Yeah. I can put it on the market myself. Yeah. I can do all this. There's, there's an emotional component to what we do uh, that you have to take into, into, into effect, uh, into account. And, and, and that has an effect ultimately on your bottom line. So, I mean, Hey, look, you can't sell your house on your own for six or six fifty. But we can sell it for you for seven. It does. It, it almost doesn't make sense. But yeah. what people are missing is those couple of things that are going to tick the boxes that we know that buyers are looking for. That's going to set your house apart as the one that sells, and that's what you get when you have an excellent agent versus an agent. And we've seen it, right? Agents who are subpar, and you you walk through, and it looks like they've taken the pictures with their phone, and their fingers are over top, and so nobody told them to close the toilet lid, uh, you know, or 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 put away their 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 tchotchkes all over the place, and their and their you know like. All of that, all of the setup. It's in the details. Absolutely. All of it is. Yeah. It's in the details. Yeah. Uh, good. Speaking of details, what are your details, Leo? How can people get in touch with you? Uh, well, uh, directly, you can reach me at leo at goodstory.ca. Um, our website, of course, uh, goodstory.ca. And Instagram, same thing, at goodstory.ca. Beautiful. That's, um, that's it. Thanks for jumping on and doing this collab with me. Uh, the Good Story X Real Collective. That's a lot of fun. I think we should, uh, I'll return the favor and, and jump on a podcast uh, on, on your channel too. So I'd love to have you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Uh, everybody, as always, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share this with anybody who you think might be interested. Uh, if you'd like to schedule an appointment directly with me, you can do so in the Calendly link below. Uh, and until next time, keep it real. Collective. Oh my god. <laughs>